Can everybody hear me if I talk like this? Louder? Okay, good. It's easier with, uh, without the mic. <laughs> okay, so uh, thanks for having me. My name is Nicholas Christian. Uh, I'm VP of product at Plotly, and I'm here to talk to you about, it's a bit of an ambitious talk. I only have 20 minutes, but I'm going to try and talk about two great open source libraries, Plotly Express and Dash. So Plotly Express uh, is a library we've just launched. We launched it uh, 10 days ago. I'm very excited about it. I'm the, the lead author for it. Um, and it's a library for data visualization with a special focus on data exploration through rapid iteration. So you've got the website right there. Turns out plotly.express is a, a valid domain, so we got it. Uh, and if you just want to play with it, it's, it's a pip install Plotly Express. Uh, and the other open source library I'm going to talk to you about is called Dash. Uh, and Dash is a framework for creating analytical web applications in pure Python. Um, so the tagline for Dash, and I'll, I'll sort of show you why that, why that is, is no JavaScript required. And again, you've got the, the website for Dash right there. Um, and just a quick note, both of these libraries are MS MIT licensed. They're totally free for any purpose. Um, Plotly has a couple of commercial products, but I won't talk about them tonight. So uh, everything I'm showing you today, you can do yourself at home um, uh, or, or on your laptop right now if you like. So um, quick show of hands, though, before I get started. Who here uses Python mostly for data science? Mostly for web development? All right. And if, if you had to make a chart right now in Python, you would use matplotlib, raw matplotlib, seaborn, bokeh, Plotly, OK, a couple of values. Uh, and uh, the, the web developers among you, you guys are using Django or Flask? OK, so it's not my intention necessarily to replace uh, either of those libraries as part of your daily toolkit, but, um, but certainly uh, I'm, I'm hoping to entice you a little bit uh, in both of these. So but most of my talk will just basically be uh, some live demos. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> so Plotly Express uh, is most useful from a, uh, a Jupyter notebook, um, and it's intended to be as easy and simple to use as possible. So I'm going to kind of create a, a bit of a role-playing scenario here. Let's pretend that I'm a data scientist. It's 9 a.m. I've gotten a new, uh, a new data set that I don't know much about. Um, I'm going to fire up Plotly Express and see if I can make any sense of it. So Plotly Express is pretty easy. You just import it, and the, the data set I'm going to use is uh, the tips data set. It's actually built into Plotly Express uh, for demo purposes, uh, and it's pretty simple. It's pretty small. It's 244 rows. Each row represents a restaurant bill. Uh, you've got some columns there. You've got some categor categorical columns, uh, some numerical columns. So basically, the total tip, so total total bill, the tip, uh, sex is the sex of the payer. Smoker is whether there were any smokers in the party. Um, day and time are, are obvious. And then the size is the size of the party. So here's a data set. It's kind of interesting. Um, and uh, you know, I'm a sort of working data scientist. I'm going to explore, see, see what's going on with, with Plotly Express. So let's make a basic scatter plot, px.scatter. I'll give it my data. And uh, let's take a look at total bill versus tips. So one line is pretty much, pretty much what you expect. Um, you know, you, it does what it says on the box. Scatter x equals total bill, y equals tip. A um, couple, couple of things to note. This is a fully interactive plot, so you have, uh, you have hovers. You can, uh, oops, sorry. You can pan. You can zoom. Uh, and it's set up, you know, the axes for you, which is kind of nice. But let's see, let's see if we can dig into this, uh, this data set a little bit. Um, it's kind of hard to see what the distribution is here. Let's do some marginals here. So marginal x equals box, marginal y equals violin. Okay, so now I've got sort of a marginal plot here, a violin plot, a box plot with a notch, some outliers. Kind of interesting. Some of the other uh, columns I've got here, sex, let's take a look at that. So color equals sex. All right starting to split the data for me. So the basic principles of Plotly Express are just that you give it a data frame, and then whatever visual variable you care about, like the x position, the y position, or the color, you just tell it the name of the data frame, sorry, the name of the column, and it sort of handles the rest for you. It assigns colors, it creates the legend, and everything's nice and interactive. Everything's cross-linked here, so I can pan, it pans, I double-click to reset, I click to hide a, a series, 
I click to show a series. Everything sort of works out, as you'd expect. Uh, and I can keep going. Let's say I'm, I'm interested in, uh, in seeing if there's any kind of trend uh, in these here. So yeah, OK, women and men, when they pay, they tip at approximately the same rate. These trend lines are roughly the same slope. You can mouse over here. It shows you the trend line. It shows you the equation. It computes the R squared for you. The kind of basic stuff you'd expect from, uh, from a data, vi data visualization library. Um, but there's some other columns in this data set. So let's, let's take a look. So instead of these marginals here, let's, let's uh, look at some other uh, variables like whether or not there were any smokers. So now I've, uh, I've faceted my data. So whether your data is on one or more subplots, from the point of view of Plotly Express, is just like whether your data is blue or red. It's just another visual variable, and you shouldn't do a big song and dance about declaring subplots and knowing how many you have and creating all the titles and stuff. Plotly Express just kind of does that for you. And so here you can see uh, non-smokers on the, on the right, oh, sorry, on the left, smokers on the right, slightly different slope um, on the trend lines there. Mm, R squared isn't very good. Probably not a very strong relationship, but maybe, maybe worth digging into. All right. Um, but uh, I see that there's some, some other columns here in the data set, like day. Let's take a look. Maybe I can facet again by day. Uh, yeah, a little bit messy. Maybe instead of coloring by, by s maybe I can uh, not color or not add some trend lines here. OK, facet by, let's do day this way, time this way. Ah, oh, interesting. So first of all, a couple things to note here. Uh, I've got my days kind of out of order. This is pretty common with data visualization libraries. It's kind of a pain. So Plotly Express has uh, some built-in built -in functionality for avoiding this problem. You can basically tell it, day, look, this is the order I want. All right, this is the order I want it in. And then lunch and dinner. And you can see that actually, interestingly enough, only one person in this data set, uh, had dinner on Thursday. Maybe we should close the restaurant on Thursday afternoons. It'd be, uh, <laughs> it, would, uh, it would save us all some money. So you can see that it's fairly easy to kind of very rapidly slice and dice your data just by one function call uh, in Plotly Express. Now, we do more than just scatter plots. Um, let's take a look at, you know, now that I'm looking at my data by, uh, by day, I'm interested in how much money am I actually making? Well, let's take a look here. I can do a bar chart. X equals day, uh, Y equals total bill. All right, oh, the order is out of whack again, so I should just probably just copy the same, the same thing here. So you notice that the arguments to bar and scatter are basically the same, kind of, uh, kind of nice, and it's, it's uh, every, every row in my data set here is a little rectangle, just like every row in my data set in the previous plot uh, was, uh, was a color. So Plotly Express comes with a whole bunch of different uh, plotting functions out of the box. You know, it's not a competition about who has the most chart types, but um, you've got bars, you've got scatters. Uh, it can do maps. I have a couple examples of, uh, of that sort of thing for you a little bit later. Um, line charts, some interesting um, multi-dimensional multi-dimensional types like scatter matrix is actually really cool. Um, you can basically see every variable plotted against every other variable, and when you do a selection, it kind of like does a cross-linked selection across them, um, and you can sort of pan and zoom. One function call, ladies and gentlemen, scatter matrix. Um, so this is Plotly Express. Uh, I don't really have time to go into a, a full detailed tutorial, but I just want to kind of give you a, a taste of the kind of data exploration you can do just with one library, a couple of simple fu function calls uh, in a Jupyter notebook. So that's my morning as a data scientist. But in the afternoon, I need to communicate my results with other people in my company, this very thriving restaurant business with my 244 meals per week. Um, you know, I need to communicate these findings with, uh, with the other waiters uh, on staff. Uh, the problem is they don't use Jupyter Notebooks, and they don't want to type Python code. I'm the only, I'm the only Python nerd uh, in the group. So uh, I would be stuck, except that there is Plotly's Dash library. So Dash is a framework that allows you to very easily build web applications in pure Python. I don't know JavaScript. I'm, I'm just enough of a nerd to know Python. That's about it. Um, but I do, I do want to share my, uh, my, my cool charts with my colleagues. So how am I going to do it? Well, I'm going to build a Dash app. Um, and actually, I'm going to live code a Dash app for you. So this is a basic Dash app. Um, you just import the Dash package and some HTML components. You create 
uh, an app, and then you give it what's called a layout. So here, if anybody here knows HTML, I said no JavaScript required, right? So you, you got to know a little bit of HTML to, to get a Dash app going. Um, I basically got two headers, uh, you know, demo, plotly express, and Dash, and then uh, H2 is just I'm a subheader, and then I run my server. So takes a second to think about it. Open it up. Break out the tab. Oop. All right. Hopefully that's clear enough. So uh, fairly simple. This is not really an app so far, but you know I can uh, I can lay out the frame of a web of a web page and uh, and I can serve it. So it wouldn't be an app unless there was some interactivity. So I'll show you how you can set up some interactivity in Pure Python. Um, this is a zero.py. Here's my my first example. So here things have gotten a little bit more complicated. I'm importing dash core components as DCC. There's some sort of interactive drop downs and that sort of thing. Uh, and some inputs and some outputs. My layout has changed a little bit. I've now got an input with ID X, uh, and, uh, and my, my level two header here now is called X out. And I'm declaring a simple function, which I'm decorating with app.callback, and I'm saying the children property of X dot out depends on the value property of X. And the relationship is just X. So let's see, let's see what happens when I run this app. I save it, the app should reboot and it will reload. OK, so now I've got my input field here, and I can type. OK, so what's happening under the hood here? Well, if I look at my network tab, every time I type, ooh, anytime now, sorry. <laughs> um, anytime I type up here, you see some, um, uh, this is a little tricky to see. In any case, you see some post requests happening. So basically, the, the, uh, the web browser is making a bunch of calls to my Python app, which is essentially just returning X over and over and over. So I'm essentially able to build um, a reactive application that includes some dynamic components on the front end, but without writing any JavaScript, which is kind of neat. OK, so let's move a little bit beyond uh, inputs and text here and, uh, and, and get to some charts. So in the second example, I'm going to load up Plotly Express the tips data set again, and I'll grab all the, the names of the columns. And instead of an input, whoops, I'm going to use a drop down, and the options will basically be uh, all of the different columns of my data frame. And then instead of an H2, I'm going to have a graph. And the figure uh, is basically going to be a scatter plot. So I'm going to initialize it to an empty scatter plot, just so it looks nice. Uh, and my callback is now basically saying that the figure property of my graph is going to just be the output of a Plotly Express call. Let's see what happens. All right, so here's my, here's my scatter plot. Here's my drop down. I can now put tip, total bill. As I, as I move the drop down, HTTP calls are happening to my app in the background, and I can see the new chart being populated. OK, this is not that interesting to see just uh, the x-axis, because actually the y-axis here is just kind of the order of the data. So um, let's get on to sort of the next level here, where um, I want to actually be able to control x, y, color, facet call, and facet row. Um, instead of one drop down here, I'm going to have a list of them, so a whole bunch of different drop downs. And then my callback is going to have a bunch of different inputs. But it's still just basically going to be the same. I'm just going to map these things straight into to Plotly Express. Help it along a little bit. <laughs> um, so here I've got you know x total bill, y is going to be tip, color is going to be sex, facet call is going to be smoker, and facet row is going to be day. All right. So now I've basically built a little uh, web application that uh, I can just host on my laptop. I can upload to Heroku. Uh, I can host like any other web application. This is all built on Flask, by the way. So it's just a Flask application that I can host anywhere. And uh, instead of giving my findings to my colleagues as a Jupyter notebook and having them code Python, I just send them a link to this application, uh, and they can kind of poke around with these with these drop downs. This isn't all you can do with Dash, but it's kind of a neat example of how easy it is to hook up some front end input elements uh, to some charts in. 30 lines of Python plus a couple new lines. So that's kind of exciting. It's a little bit ugly, though, so let's, uh, let's just style it a little bit. Um, I just added a couple little, little style, uh, style elements just to show that it's not all, all Times New Roman. Uh, so there you go, a slightly, slightly nicer version of this thing. Um, 
color by smoker, split by time, and day. And there you go. Fairly easy to, to share my findings, uh, you know, insightful as they might be with my colleagues using Dash. So that's kind of a lightning tour through, um, through Dash and Plotly Express. Um, so drilling in a little bit on, in terms of what we can do, Plotly Express is basically a wrapper around Plotly.py, which is Plotly's sort of fairly mature, battle-tested uh, data visualization library. But it kind of hides all the details for you. So some of the charts I made um, in just one line here, one function call, they take 10, 20, 30 lines of Python in our documentation uh, to make. Um, so Plotly Express allows you to be significantly more efficient about sort of thinking about the graph that you want and not sort of thinking about the data structures that you need to build in order to feed to Plotly uh, to get the graph that you want. <laughs> Um, so you can stay kind of at the data, an data analytic level um, of your thinking. Uh, Plotly Express supports all sorts of different chart types beyond the, beyond the ones I was able to, to kind of live code for you here today. So 2D, 3D, polar charts, ternary charts. We've got maps of a few different kinds, uh, built-in animations, faceting you've seen, trend lines and marginals, which is kind of exciting. Um, and it inherits a whole bunch of cool features from its big brother, Plotly.py. So you can export to any format, PNG, SVG, PDF, uh, offline HTML. You can export it to the underlying JSON representation. We have a, a free and open source GUI editor, which you can use to edit all the different, um, different aspects of your figures. Um, and we have built-in and user-defined themes. And so close your eyes if you're epileptic. Uh, all of these charts are just one line uh, with Plotly.py, so some 3D polar lines, polar bars with a dark theme, slippy maps, lines on a map, animated core plot, scatter plot, matrix, uh, parallel coordinates, parallel sets, um, contours. All this and more is built into uh, to Plotly Express, and therefore it's accessible from Dash, uh, basically just directly. Um, and just like Plotly Express is more than just what I've shown you, uh, Dash is a bit more than, than what I've shown you. So I, I basically showed you one chart, five drop downs. Uh, here are a few more complicated examples. This is one that we've made, uh, which I've actually already got loaded. Um, so this is basically exploring uh, support vector machines with a bunch of different parameters. Uh, and it shows, you know, you've got kind of a funky chart here um, that shows the output of a machine learning model on some random data. You can change the data set. You can change the sample size. You can play with the threshold of your machine learning model. Uh, here you can see inputs that depend on each other. So radial basis function has no degree, but a polynomial does. So you can see that the inputs can kind of depend on each other. Everything refreshes fairly fast. This thing's up in the cloud. So even though it's making sort of big HTTP calls every time you change one of the inputs to get the graph back, still very, very quick. Um, and very, very easy to build an app like this. Um, so the, the source for this is up on GitHub. You have to scroll a little bit. I don't know why. But um, if you scroll here, you've got the link for the, this app. So this is one that we've made. Um, but what we're most excited about at Plotly is that people are actually using Dash sort of out in the wild um, uh, as any sort of successful open source project. Um, and so what we've seen is that um, there's a couple of papers that have come out in Nature recently where sort of actual hardcore scientists are using Dash uh, to present their results to each other, which is hugely exciting for us. So this is an example of the website to support a paper entirely built in Dash. So this isn't just a little app, right? This is the entire site is in Dash. You've got sort of a tab navigation up here, a user guide. Um, we were super impressed when, when, this, uh, when this app came out. This person really just grabbed Dash and sort of used it for all it was worth to present their results. Um, I don't really know about I don't really know a whole lot about um, about gene editing, but um, you know, uh, I know I know a sexy data app when I see one. Um, so this person has uh, has gone has, has gone sort of all in on uh, on Dash and is using this to present their results, which is really exciting for us. Um, and there's another app that came sorry another paper that came out recently in Nature uh, talking about the cost of electricity in sub-Saharan Africa, and here they're using um, again a lot of features of both Plotly.com. Plotly.py, this is pre-Plotly Express, uh, and Dash uh, to build some, some fairly sophisticated models. These ones are a little less reactive because I think they actually need to execute some complicated code in the background. So they have like an update button. So it's a little bit le less reactive, but just goes to show some of the sort of flexibility and power um, of, uh, of Dash as a sort of an application framework and of Plotly.py um, as a visualization framework to back it. And so we're very excited uh, to sort of 
give these two libraries away to the community um, to see what kind of apps people can build out of Dash, to see what kind of charts people can build out of Plotly Express. Uh, and we work very hard to make sure that they sort of click together very nicely so that uh, one lets you use the other uh, as smoothly as possible. I have time for a couple of questions, if people have any questions. on the details of what you're doing. Uh, certainly, at some point, you will run into latency issues. There are a couple of different ways to, uh, sorry, the question was, for those who can't hear, at what point do you run into latency issues when you have large data sets? Um, it depends a little bit on whether this is an app that's sort of hosted on the, on the public internet or whether it's hosted uh, inside your network. Um, but it's definitely uh, one of the engineering considerations you need to take into account when building a Dash app. Um, overall, though, I have personally been surprised at how not much of a problem it is. It sort of turns out to work out pretty well most of the time. Um, and there are a couple of different ways uh, that are coming out, I think, this week to uh, move some of the processing to the client side by writing a little bit of JavaScript if you need to. So there's sort of the client side escape hatch uh, for, for faster processing. But uh, the general recommendation that we have is sort of build it the naive way. You might be surprised if it turns out to be a real problem. Um, there, are, there are ways of, of optimizing things. How about adding your own, for example, you, you saw, you show a couple of selectors that comes directly from Dash, but let's say I have my own selector in JavaScript and my CSS. Can I plug in, in into, into Dash directly those? Yes. That, that little piece of JavaScript, CSS on my side? Uh, absolutely. The, the way that uh, work each of these is a, a component. So uh, Dash Core Components is a component library, and we have a f uh, sort of fairly mechanical way of wrapping uh, React components, uh, connecting them into the Dash framework and making them available. And so there are a number of third-party components that have been built. We have a couple of libraries. We have Dash Bio and Dash uh, DAC, which are a couple of different uh, widget toolkits that you can use for different applications. So if you have a, a particular chart type that you like or a particular calendar picker or a very complex control uh, in JavaScript, in order to make, access make it accessible to Dash, you have to first wrap it in React and then, uh, and then Dash. And that's, uh, if you go to dash.plot.ly, there's a uh, component builder's guide that kind of walks you through the details of that. Uh, the great thing is, once you've done that, if you open source it, it's available to all Dash users in the community. And so we're always very excited when people contribute sort of new components to the, to the Dash community uh, and make them available to each other. Okay, well, I'll be around during the break if anybody has any questions that they don't feel comfortable shouting out. Thank you for listening.